You're all very welcome this afternoon. We're very pleased that you've been able to come along to the gospel meeting, and we trust that God will bless you for coming. We're going to open the meeting with the words of hymn 175. Heart, the gospel news is sounding. Christ has suffered on the tree. Streams of mercy are abounding. Grace for all is rich and free. Now, poor sinner, come to him who died for thee. Verse 3 says, grace is flowing like a river. Millions there have been supplied. Still it flows as fresh as ever from the Saviour's wounded side. None need perish. All may live, for Christ has died. We'll just keep our seats for the first three verses of 175. For Christ has died. If you're not saved, dear friend, this could be the day when you get to know the Lord Jesus Christ as your own and personal Saviour. And that's why we have this meeting, that sinners might get to know our Saviour. Now, just before we commend ourselves to God, as is our custom, we're going to mention some families that if you're a believer, you could pray for. There are those that are sick, Naomi Campbell, Mrs. Wilson's daughter, May Farr, May Mark, Sam McAtee, Jim Wilson, Harry McKibben, Newell and Marley Bingham. And then there's two families that have been bereaved in recent days. The Tanner family with connections to the Coffey family, that is, and the Maben family and Anna Lung. So we're just going to commend ourselves now to God. Our Heavenly Father, we bow again in thy presence. We do so in the precious and worthy name of the Lord Jesus Christ. We come, our Father, with thanksgivings in our heart for thy goodness to us. Thou hast blessed each one of us that is here today that we're enabled to be at this meeting. We thank thee again, our Father, for thy long suffering with us, for thy grace towards us. We have been singing about the great provision that has been made 
And we thank you, our Father, and many in this room that have availed themselves of that blessing. There are others, our Father, who as yet have not put their faith and trust in the Lord Jesus Christ. We earnestly pray unto thee, our Father, this would be the day when they would get to know him. We acknowledge freely, our Father, salvation is thine own work. And we acknowledge, our Father, that um, all may live, for Christ has died. And we thank thee for that great message that can go out to the whosoever will. We look to thee, our Father, for thy help, for Richard, as he would bring before us a message from the Bible, a message concerning thy son. We pray that thou would help him in all things that are necessary. And we look to thee for thy help and for thy blessing. We spread the need before thee. The great God is able to meet our every need, far above all that we would ask or think. And we look to thee and ask for thy help in the Saviour's worthy and precious name. Amen. Now, the meetings for the incoming week are on Thursday at 8 p.m. is the prayer meeting and the Bible reading. And we're studying in the book of Exodus, the last of the great plagues, Exodus 12, starting at Exodus chapter 12, starting at verse 12. And then next Lord's Day is the breaking of bread at 11, at 2.30, the Sunday school, the prayer meeting at 3, the gospel meeting again at 3.30, and the speaker next Lord's Day expected in the will of God is Bruce Tinsley from Balna Hinch. And today we have Richard Osborne, no stranger to us. We're very glad to have Richard with us. And now he's going to come and bring us a message from the Word of God. We'll hand the meeting over to Richard. Now again, we make all very welcome to the meeting this afternoon. We certainly appreciate your presence with us. Now, if you have your Bible with you, I'd like you to turn, please, to Jeremiah and chapter 8. Jeremiah chapter 8. <clears throat> Jeremiah chapter 8, reading verse 20. <clears throat> the harvest is past. The summer is ended. And we are not saved. Turn over to Acts chapter 4, please. Acts chapter 4. <clears throat> Reading at verse 12. Acts chapter 4 and verse 12. Neither is there salvation in any other. For there is none other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. Turn back to Matthew chapter 19, please. <clears throat> Matthew chapter 19, Lord Jesus speaking here in verse 24. And again I say unto you, it is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich man to enter into the kingdom of God. When his disciples heard it, they were exceedingly amazed, saying, Who then can be saved? Finally, in Acts chapter 16, Acts chapter 16, <clears throat> reading from verse 27. And the keeper of the prison, awaking out of his sleep and seeing the prison doors open, he drew out his sword and would have killed himself, supposing that the prisoners had been fled. But Paul cried with a loud voice, saying, Do thyself no harm, for we are all here. Then he called for a light and sprang in and came trembling and fell down before Paul and Silas and brought them out and said, Sirs, 
what must I do to be saved? And they said, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved, and thy house. Now that will do for a reading. We do trust with the blessing of God upon it. <clears throat> Maybe the word that has been on my mind for the gospel meeting this afternoon. It's maybe not a very popular word in the world in which you and I live. Not very popular perhaps in 2024, the word saved. Just want to say at the outset of our remarks this afternoon here in Ballykeel that it's, it's good to be, it's good to be saved in the day in which we live. In Jeremiah chapter 8, we read there the words, the harvest is past, the summer ended, and we are not saved. Then when we come over to Acts in chapter 4, we read there, neither is there salvation in any other, for there is none other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. Then we want to think of the question that the disciples asked the Lord Jesus Christ. Who then can be saved? And finally in Acts chapter 16, the words of the Philippian jailer, he said to Paul and Silas, what must I do to be saved? I want to think of the answer this afternoon. They said, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be, thou shalt be saved. In this gathered company this afternoon, indeed right across the broad acres of earth, there are just two classes of people. Just two classes. There are those who are saved or redeemed by the precious blood of Christ. By that we mean they have a time in life that they can look back to. When they understood something of their need, something of their sin and something of their guilt before God. Not only did they understand something of their need, but they realized that there was one who met their need by the shedding of his precious blood upon the cross at Calvary. And acknowledging their sin and their guilt before God, they stepped out in faith upon the finished work of Christ or they rested their all for eternity on what he had done upon the cross at Calvary. In other words, they were saved in a moment of time. This is not something that takes months and weeks and perhaps years. This is something that takes place in a moment of time. An individual willing to bow the knee in repentance before God and trusting the Lord Jesus Christ as their own and personal Savior. Those who are saved. But perhaps there are those under the sound of our voice here in Balakil Gospel Hall this afternoon. And up to this moment in time, the first Lord's Day of November 2024, it could be said of you, the harvest is past. The summer ended and we are not, not saved. Not saved. Paul writing to the Ephesians in chapter 2, 
he points them back in time to the days before they were saved. And he says at that time, ye were without Christ. Without Christ. Having no hope and without God in the world. No hope in this world. And no hope for the world to come. I wonder, does that just describe some in our gospel meeting here this afternoon? Now, when we speak about hope, it's not a fingers crossed hope. Every individual who's saved, they're not hoping to be in heaven. They're as sure of heaven as if already there. But every individual on this planet this afternoon who are without Christ, they are without hope. We say again, without hope in this world and without hope for the great unending eternity. So we will allow you yourself to just to put yourself in whatever group of people we're speaking about here this afternoon. Those who are saved, those who have a time in life when they trusted the Lord Jesus Christ as their own and personal saviour. I was speaking to some here today and up until this moment of time. You have never a time in life when you bowed the knee, trusted the Lord Jesus Christ as your saviour. It can be said of you here today, not saved, not saved. Still without Christ, still without hope. When we come to Acts chapter 4, <clears throat> verse 12, we read there that we, we must, we must be saved. Because of Adam's sin in Eden's garden, you and I are not in this world to stay. I think we'd all be clear on that this afternoon. Death is on each one of our tracks. If the Lord be not come, as something that lies out before us all, is death. All under the sound of our voice here today, we all intend to be in heaven when the little journey of life is over. We all intend to be in heaven. But listen to the words that we have read in Acts chapter 4 and verse 12 here today. We must be saved. Nothing else will do for heaven. A good life won't do. Good attendance at the gospel hall or any other place won't do for heaven. And good intentions won't do. The older men, they used to remind us that the way to hell is paved with good intentions. We must, we must be saved. It's one of those great musts in our Bible. We must be saved. As I've said, we all intend to be in heaven. We all think perhaps of heaven as a, as a happy place. And heaven will be a happy place. 
filled with happy people. Those who know their sins forgiven. It'll be a place where there'll be no tears. It'll be a place where there'll be no trials. And there'll be no troubles. But we must remember that heaven's not only a happy place, but heaven's a holy place. A holy place. And sin will never ever enter heaven. I think the hymn writer put it well when he penned the words. Ye must be born again or never enter heaven. His only blood wise ones are there. The ransomed and forgiven. And so you can ask yourselves the question this afternoon. Am I on the way to heaven? For well, we're all on a journey. We're there going up. Or we're in the journey down. And you can ask yourself this afternoon. Am I on the way to heaven? Or am I on the way down? Mind you, we're all born. We were all born on the way down. Make no mistake about that this afternoon. We don't come to Balakil Gospel Hall to point a finger. We were everyone born on the way down. Listen to what your Bible says in Romans 3 and 23. It says there's no difference. That sets us all on one level here today. There's no difference for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. And so we can't come here to Balakil this afternoon and point a finger. But I say this is good to have a moment in time when you came to know your sins forgiven and peace with God and heaven is your eternal home if you forget all else that we have said here today you take these words home with you we must be saved if we're ever going to fill a place in God's heaven we will never enter heaven in our sins we say again we use the words of the hymn writer we must be born again or never enter heaven. There's only blood washed ones are there, the ransomed and forgiven. When we come over to Matthew's Gospel in chapter 19, here we have the question that the disciples asked the Lord Jesus Christ. The rich young ruler had went away. And the Savior was saddened. And the disciples turned to the Lord Jesus and they said, Are there few that be saved? Then they said, Who then? Who then? Can be see it? That's a good question to ask. Who then can be see it? You know, this message that we preach is a message of good news. And we tell you in Balakil Gospel Hall this afternoon that all can be saved. My brother Adam gave the hymn out there. I was enjoying the words of the third verse this week. That none need perish. All may live. 
for Christ has died. And so we see clearly today that all can be saved. I want to tell you this afternoon, it was the desire of all in the little prayer meeting over at the other side of the yard here today that all gathered here would be saved. It's the desire of all that come to this desk that you would be saved. Could we remind you today it's the desire of God that you would be saved. 1 Timothy chapter 2 God our Savior who will of all men to be saved and come to a knowledge of the truth. Could we take a, a few minutes here this afternoon and remind you again of what God has done in order that you could be saved. <clears throat> we read in Galatians chapter 4 and verse 4 that when the fullness of time was come, God sent forth his son. Listen to the words of John 3 and verse 17. For God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world. Listen to this. But that the world through him might be saved. It's not only the desire of the saints that you would be saved. It's not only the desire of the speaker is that you would be saved, but it's the desire of God that you would be saved. And out of love and kindness to your precious soul, the God of heaven sent his son into this world. And John reminds us that he came unto his own, and his own received him not. But to as many as received him, to them give he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. And out of kindness to you, dear soul, in our meeting this afternoon, God sent his only son from heaven to die on a, pro a cross of shame outside the city of Jerusalem. And there upon the cross at Calvary, the sinless, eternal, spotless Son of God. Could we tell you that he made provision for all of mankind? And when he suffered the just for the unjust, yea, he tasted death for every man upon the cross, made provision for all by the shedding of his precious blood. When the work that the Father gave him to do was finished, the Lord Jesus cried with a loud voice out of the darkness of Calvary, finished. And the Lord Jesus made provision for all of mankind. All of mankind. This is what encourages us to come to the, the desk this afternoon. That it was for all. And I wonder was saying that none may perish. All may live. For Christ has died. Who then can be saved? We tell you here this afternoon that all can be saved because of what was done on Calvary's cross. We tell you here this afternoon that you could be saved. You could be saved. Perhaps you have lingered long in your sins. Come through the door of the hall this afternoon and maybe not a thought about your soul or about your sin or about meeting God. You could leave Balakil Gospel Hall this afternoon knowing your sins forgiven, knowing peace with God, and as sure of heaven as if already there. 
Why? Because there was one who shed his precious blood upon the cross at Calvary. And he made provision for all of mankind. And if you were to take true ground before God here this afternoon, and step out in faith upon the finished work of Christ, you could be saved in the first Lord's Day of November 2024. The Philippine jailer asked the question, in Acts chapter 16, what must I do to be saved? The answer came back, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. See, this is the simplicity of it. The simplicity of salvation. This is not weeks, as we have said, of trying or doing what's best. But by simply believing on Jesus, the weary and sinful find rest. This, is, this rem tells me that there's individual responsibility. It's your responsibility. They said, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. They couldn't believe for him. The Sunday school teacher can't believe for us. The gospel preacher can't believe. This is up to the individual. And it's your own responsibility. And could remind you as we bring our remarks to a close here today. It's a great responsibility. For you have a precious soul. And as we're reminded in the prayer meeting here this afternoon. Eternity's ages your soul has to face. And it's in the blackness of darkness, or it's in the riches of grace. And where you will spend eternity will depend on what you've done here in time with the person of the Lord Jesus Christ. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, the one who suffered, bled, and died at Calvary. The one that lay in the tomb. The one that God raised from the dead. The one who is now seated at the right hand of the majesty on high. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. Shall we pray? <clears throat> Our Father, we draw near to thee another time. In the honoured name of thy Son, the Lord Jesus Christ, we thank thee for another time and allowed to stand here with an open Bible before us and to make known the glorious message of the gospel. We do thank thee for such a message as heaven's message and as for all of mankind. And so, our Father, we look to thee and pray indeed to bless thy precious word here today. We do thank thee for a goodly number gathered. We pray thy blessing upon all gathered here today. And pray if there are one or even more in our company, and it could be said of them that the harvest is past, the summer ended, and they are not saved. We pray indeed, our Father, that this might be the day of the wise, and seek the Lord while he may be found. Call upon him while he is near. Leave the hall here this afternoon, saved and sure of heaven. We do thank thee that this is very possible. All made possible through the person, through the work of thy Son, the Lord Jesus at Calvary. And so we pray thy blessing upon thy precious word here today, the gospel right across this land, wherever thy word is open and read, and the gospel made known here today. We pray thy blessing upon it, and ask thee indeed, our Father, just now to take off our thanks for refreshment provided, and separate us with thy blessing, we do pray, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. <coughs> Amen.